right, so now we're going to come back and talk about that treasury stock a little bit more. So treasury stock is when we have issued stock, we've sold it, it's out there on the market, and we have gone back and bought it back ourselves. Now, there, this is not stock that we have never issued, that we are authorized and have never issued. That's not what we're talking about. So this is out of those 18,000 shares that we've issued. We've gone back and bought some of them up for ourselves, and we are now holding our own stock. When we hold our own stock, that is not an asset. Treasury stock is a contra equity account. So it would have a normal debit balance. So it is not an asset, it is not an investment. There's lots of reasons that companies may buy treasury stock. Um, one of the most common reasons is we want to give stock to our employees as part of their compensation. We cannot give them stock that has not previously been issued. So that stock that we're authorized, those 20 million shares that we're authorized but have never issued, that's worthless. It, I always say it's like, a gift card you know that gift cards have to be swiped to be activated before they have value well issuing the stock is like activating the gift card if you give someone a gift card that never got activated that's worthless you have to issue the stock to activate the gift card then you have to buy the stock back so that you can turn around and give it to your employees so a lot of times people think that stock, if your company gives you stock, that that's essentially free compensation to them. It's not. It costs them real money. They had to issue that stock and then buy it back. So it costs them real money to give you that stock. Now, some other reasons that we may want to buy treasury stock. Um, it could be that we know for example, that we've got something really cool going to come out that's going to make our stock price go really high. So we can go up and buy some of our own stock at, at when the stock price is low. And then when our stock price goes up after we've made this announcement of, hey, we've got this really cool thing, then we can sell the stock and make profit on ourselves. And that's perfectly legal. We can do that. Okay. It could be, again, if you have too much stock available, that can drive your stock price down. There's a supply and demand function here. So by buying treasury stock, you're reducing the supply of your stock, which is if you reduce it enough, demand will exceed supply, the stock price will go up. So you can make your you can manipulate your stock price in that way. It could also be you're trying to avoid a takeover. So if, if a corporate raider, like if you've ever seen Pretty Woman Richard Gere and Pretty Woman was a uh, corporate raider, he would go out and buy up companies. One of the ways that they buy up companies is buy up all of your stock. Once someone owns 50% of your stock, they now have the voting majority. They basically can do anything they want. So you can buy up your own stock at, to try to prevent them from getting more than 50% of it. Um, it is possible to buy up all of your stock and take your company private. That's not very common, but it has happened before. Mary Kay is an example of that. So Mary Kay used to be a publicly traded corporation, but before Mary Kay Ash died, she was very unhappy with the direction that the board of directors were taking her company. And so she bought up all the stock and took it off the stock market. And now Mary Kay is a private corporation again. So again, treasury stock is a contra equity account, which means it has a normal debit balance. We record the treasury stock at what we paid for it. No reference to par value. Par value has nothing to do with this. So whatever we paid the stock, paid for the stock is what we recorded at in treasury stock. Like all contra equity stocks, we will subtract it on our balance sheet. So we're going to report it underneath retained earnings and we subtract it to reduce total equity. So let's walk through some examples. So we're told that on March 31st, we purchase a thousand shares of our own stock and we pay $5 a share. So in this case, we would debit treasury stock credit cash for $5,000. Now, if we sell 100 of those treasury stock shares for $5 a piece, then we'll debit cash credit treasury stock for $100.
$500, I apologize, 100 times 5. So if we're looking at our Treasury Stock T account, it did have a debit balance of 5000 in it. And now I have credited it for 500. I've reduced it so that it now has a debit balance of 4500 this is because I sold the shares at the same cost that I bought them at. What happens if we don't sell them at exactly the same cost that we bought them at? So let's say that we resell 200 shares of Treasury stock for $6 a share. Remember that we paid $5 a share for them. So we're going to sell them for $1,200, but they only have an original cost of a thousand dollars 200 times five so we're going to debit cash for twelve hundred dollars we're going to credit treasury stock for the one thousand dollars and then we're going to credit a new account called paid in capital from treasury stock for the other 200 for the premium that we made when we sold them So now our treasury stock account has a debit balance of 3,500 and our paid in capital from treasury stock has a credit balance of 200. Now, what happens if we sell them below cost? So here we're told we sold 200 treasury shares, but they only, we only were able to sell them for $4.30. We needed money, we went ahead and decided to do it anyway. But remember, they have a cost of 500. So I received $200 in cash, 200 times 430, I received $860 in cash. I have to credit treasury stock at cost though for $1,000. So I'm going to debit cash for the 860, I'm going to credit treasury stock for 1,000, but now I'm going to debit that paid in capital from treasury stock for the 140. So that was the same account that I credited when I sold them above par, I'm now going to debit when I sell them below par. So again, if we look at our T accounts, now Treasury stock only has a balance of $2,500 and the paid in capital from Treasury stock has a credit balance of sixty. So looking at our balance sheet here, notice I've got preferred stock and paid in capital from preferred plus common plus paid in capital from common. All of that added together equals total paid in capital. Then I plug in retained earnings and then notice I subtract out the balance in treasury stock. So I have that in parentheses to remind me that I am subtracting it because as a contra equity, it reduces overall capital.